all right hello everyone and welcome um so the reason i'm doing a video um today is one uh i'm not going to talk for the whole period and two i want to give you a um a break of me just talking you can do this lesson at your own pace um and it lets me talk to each one of you individually uh just to talk about recommendations and check up with all of you um and catch up on makeup work um so this is going to be a self-paced lesson it's also more friendly for those that are virtual um so we're going to be talking about valence electrons um and as you can see from my subtitle valence electrons are the whole big reason that we care about electron configuration so why do we do it you know what does it actually matter um and this is kind of just an introduction to that and also a review of electron configurations and it's going to combine what we had gone over yesterday in class with electron configurations so hopefully it will introduce uh, a new way to uh, get the electron configurations especially the noble gas configurations um all right so let's there we go just a recap of electron configurations um these boxes that are um over here they represent where the orbitals are electronically what i mean by that is energetically it's probably the better word so our 1s orbital down here is the lowest energy as you go up you are increasing the amount of energy required to put an electron in this orbital so the 4s has a greater energy than the 3p the 3d orbital has a greater amount of energy than the 4s and we fill these electrons up uh, with electrons depending on how many electrons are in the atom. For example, carbon has six, at six electrons. Um, I've gone over how to find out how many electrons are in the atom. You should be able to do that. Um, please you know, see me if you need help with that. Six electrons. So we take the first two and we put them the lowest amount of energy. Fill us up our 1s. We have the next two go in the 2s. And now we start filling up our boxes in the 2p. Notice how I did not pair these two electrons up, but they are in two separate boxes. That was one of our rules. And here are where all of these six electrons go. And we can write out our electron configuration as such. What we do is we take the orbital, so the 1s orbital, we write how many electrons are in it. One, two. We move on. The 2s electrons, there are two in there. And then there are two electrons in the 2p orbital. That's how we get our electron configuration. Okay. All right. I want to offer a different way of doing this. Um, using what we had gone over in class. Let me move my camera up. It's out of the way. Um, there's a lot going on in this slide. And I want to kind of go through it all. So, how we can do this. I've circled here, or written onto this image, where each one of these orbitals gets filled up. So if we have our 1s, our 2s, and our 2p, just as an example. These, the order of the electrons and the elements represents the order of these orbitals. That's why there's the first two electrons, hydrogen, helium. Uh, just a note that helium is over here normally. Um, and the reason it's over here is for purposes of electron, but it's usually over here for purposes of um, what we're going to be talking about uh, soon. All right. So I know it's a little confusing, but normally helium is over in group 18. Um, so helium is not in group two. So our 1s. Um, electrons, hydrogen, helium, one, two, our 2s is going to be these two elements. And as we increase the amount of electrons, we're going through our P. So boron over here has five electrons. It will have our first electron will be 2P1 will be its last, um, orbital carbon. As we saw, we'll have a 2P2. Nitrogen, filling up another one, 2p3, 
and so on and so forth until we get to neon, which is 2p6. So we will fill in our electrons. And this will continue um, until we get to wherever electron we're looking, whatever atom we're looking for. And I've labeled each one of these blocks. They are color coded and labeled with what orbital that um, electrons or those atoms are that are filled by electrons are representing. All right. So I have done tin. I've circled tin over here. This is um, there are 50 electrons in tin. So topic number is 50s. You can't tell it out by the picture, but it's 50. I promise. Because 49 is over here. So tin has 50 electrons. Now instead of doing all these boxes, filling them up, counting out 50, here's what we can do. We can skip that and start by saying, here's 10, it's all the way down here, which means that everything above it and to the left of it, all of this stuff that I am circling right now, we know it's probably full. It is filled. So take our 1s2. R2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, or 5s2. Those are all already filled just based off of, oh, I forgot the 4d10, excuse me. Those are already filled. We know that because every single element below 10 that has a atomic number less than 50 will have those electrons filling up one by one and we are now in the 5p block here so indium would have one 5p1 10 will now have 5p2 it's the second element in this 5 uh, 5p block and we know that we would go up to 5p2 and this whole thing right here is the electron configuration of 10. all right Noble gas configurations. Um, I think what I'm going to show you will make this a little bit more clear. Um, hopefully it does. We talked um, a lot yesterday about the noble gases. Um, and I'm using the term now just because we've I've introduced it. They are the elements in group 18. So I don't show all of them here, but helium, neon, argon, below that's krypton and xenon. Um, those are the noble gases. They are all the way off to the right in group 18. What we did um, previously is we took the electron configuration of the noble gas in the period above the element we were talking about. So here's carbon. Carbon is in period two. Helium is in period one. So carbon, the noble gas, up one row and all the way to the right, up a period and in group 18 would be helium so here is carbon's electron configuration here is helium's so all we do is take the 1s2 we cancel it out and we are just left with this 2s2 2p2 and we would get this as our electron configuration and the noble gas um, form all right and i'll get to why this is important um soon so that is the noble gas configuration. That's how we had previously done it. I had given you the electron configurations of the noble gases. I gave you a table that had all of them. Here's another way to do this. And I'm going to do this with 10. So you still want to find 10 which over here circled. And you still want to find that electron or the noble gas that is up one row and all the way to the right. So we go up one row, up a period, from period five to period four, all the way to the right, we find Krypton. I'm gonna write this out in Krypton, in brackets. So all of this stuff, all of these electrons we don't care about now, because we've now crossed them out with Krypton. Now, all we have to do is everything that's left in the same period. So anything that is left, will be in the same period as the element we are trying to find. So we have the 5s2. There are two atoms or two electrons in the 5s2. There are 
there are 10 atoms in B4D10. And just again, 2 when we get to 10 in the 5P. We will get 5P2. All right. So I think that this is a little bit of a simpler form, a way to get the uh, noble gas configuration. You basically get to cross out all this stuff and you get to really simplify this. Um, I would, I'm not sure if I would expect you to be able to, you know, label this chart with where the, um, where the different orbitals are. I might make that itself a different question, you know, if I label this, can you tell me where the four S's are? Like that type of, where, where's the orbital in the um, periodic table? All right, so here is our noble gas configuration and we're gonna show why this is gonna be useful just in a second. So why am I doing this? Why am I like revisiting this um, and really making a big deal out of this? Um, the transfer of electrons between atoms is the driving force for most of chemistry like electrons are super important like really important um we need to figure out which electrons are going to be transferred how many and why they are being transferred that's going to tell us why certain reactions are happening like why um the sodium and the chlorine come together to form salt so we're gonna use this term here valence electrons um you might have heard from this term from a uh, previous science class, um, like seventh or eighth grade science. Um, they are important, valence electrons. And I'm really gonna hammer home this idea. This is one of the really important pieces of um, content for this class, all right? Valence electrons are defined as electrons in the outermost energy level. When I talk about energy level, I'm talking about the principal quantum number N. For a 1s electron, this number is 1. 1s, this is 1. 5p, the number is 5. For a 5d electron, it would also be 5. Now, for most of the periodic table, if I can, nope, I don't have a. For most of the periodic table, what we're going to be talking about is what period it's in, the electrons. It's going to be this period. We're really going to kind of ignore the D um, electrons um, in terms of valence electrons. We'll talk about D, elect uh, D um, these D block a little bit, but not too much because they don't really follow these rules. We're going to be talking about the S and the P uh, blocks mostly. All right. So period five. We're talking just the 5s and the 5p. For period four, we're talking 4s and 4p. Those are the what, the electrons that we're going to be our valence electrons, if the element is in that period. So let me show you what I mean by that. Here's an example. Carbon. Here is our electron configuration of carbon. Again, I've done this. Valence electrons are only the electrons in the outermost energy level. Carbon has electrons in N equals 1 and N equals 2. All right. The outermost is only N equals 2. N equals 1 is on the inside. They're called core electrons, and they're not going to do anything. They are going to stick there. They are, they are locked in. You know, they're not moving anywhere. But we now have these four electrons that are in the N equals two level, okay? So we have the two S and we have the two P electrons. So we have one, two, one, two. These four electrons are our, what we call the valence electrons, okay? They are this is how many valence electrons carbon will have. And why why I've been pushing this noble gas configuration this whole time is because when we do this, we get rid of the core electrons. We get rid of the junk. We only care about this. 
2s2, 2p2, 4 electrons. These are the valence electrons. That's why I've been pushing this noble gas configuration so much. Because it tells us how many valence electrons there are. I'm going to come back to just a small, slight example or uh, exception. But I will talk about what I mean by that. Okay? So, nitrogen has seven electrons. So, we fill up 2s2. We fill up another electron. We now would have 2p3. And nitrogen, which has seven electrons, would have five valence electrons. Just as another example. All right, so here is 10. And here is our electron configuration that I had figured. This whole big, long thing. Let's shorten it. All of this stuff right here are the core electrons. All that stuff gets shortened to the krypton. And we are left with just 5s2, 4d10, 5p2. So, how many valence electrons are there? 10 is in period 5. And if we go back a few slides, I could show that. It is in period 5, so we only care about n equals 5 valence electrons. We don't care about the 4d10. We have 5s2 plus 5p2. That gives us 4 valence electrons. Alright. We don't care about this 4d10 because 10 is in the 5th period. We only care about the s and the p uh, electrons. Alright. The reason why is weird energy stuff. I know that's not a good answer. But it's past the scope of what i would really like to get into for this course because it deals with a lot of that like crazy math and quantum numbers and stuff that i don't know it all right i'd have to learn that and i, I don't want to do that all right oh so if you notice something about carbon and 10 here is carbon here is 10 they both had four Valence electrons. I'm sure that's not a coincidence. They're in the same group. The big, big idea is, and I've underlined this to, to tell you how important it is. Elements in the same group have the same amount of valence electrons. And we will see that elements in the same group will have similar properties. All right? It's super, super important idea of chemistry. And it is all due to those valence electrons. Um, just a fun fact that I've included. The creator of the periodic table, Dmitry Mendeleev, um, he does have an element named after him. It's one of those uh, man-made ones. He was able to predict the certain elements that were not discovered at the time. He predicted properties such as their boiling point or their melting point. He was able to predict them relatively closely because he knew that they were in the same group. I, I think it actually was gallium or germanium, so 32 here, that was not discovered, but he was able to predict the, um, the properties of it. All right. I think it was gallium. So that's a uh, 31 over here. He was able to predict it. All right. So that is big important idea. And we can simplify this even more. Carbon. Four valence electrons, as we have just seen. Nitrogen. You add up extra electron into the p orbital. Five valence electrons. Oxygen, you add another electron into that 2p orbital, six valence electrons. I, I should, you should be able to follow the pattern. How many valence electrons does fluorine have? I'm 
looking at you like it's um door of the explorer it's seven yay all right foreman's got seven valence electrons if you were to include four on here that's i wanted to swap these okay that's all right boron has five protons it would have three valence electrons Beryllium would have two. Lithium would have one. And I've summarized all of this stuff in this picture. All right. Arsenic. Group 15. The way you can do this is for the groups one and two. That's how many valence electrons there are. So cesium. One valence electron. Radium, down here, two valence electrons. For these groups here, you just knock out the one. Like that. Arsenic, five valence electrons. Chlorine, seven. Thallium, three. Three valence electrons. And you may be wondering, where, where is the rest of the periodic table? Um, I've mentioned this. We're going to talk about D orbitals a little bit. They don't have easily identifiable, um, valence electrons because the D orbitals are weird. And I, I, I promise we will get to that. All right. The last, um, quick thing is Lewis dash structures. I have to change my camera again. Um, this is not too much. There's... It's pretty simple. Um, all you have to do is take your element name. Here is carbon. Atomic symbol is C. It has four valence electrons. You circle them around the element. That's it. Nitrogen has five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, you do the first four, and then you're going to start to pair them up. And we'll see why we do this. Um, it's important. It, it helps simplify... Something we're going to learn about in the future. Um, I'll do another example. Oxygen. Which we saw had six valence electrons. For our last slide. Here's oxygen. You go one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, this should be here for being really... Uh... There we go. How it should look. All right, that's all you have to do. So if we took tin, just as another example, we said tin had four. One, two, three, four. Done. All right. Um, this is going to be helpful pretty soon. All right. Um, so I have put up the homework. Please do it. Have a great day.